The OpenAPI specification provides a great way for us to specify how our API looks like so that we can create a client and a server implementation for it. Now, there are many powerful OpenAPI generators which will create these client and server implementations for us. Now, in this video, we will take a look at one of the most powerful TypeScript generators, the OpenAPI SOT client, which we can use to create a 100% type safe HTTP client in TypeScript, which is backed by the SOT library. So many of you maybe already know what the OpenAPI specification is. So I will keep this part really short, but for the ones of you who don't know what it is, basically you can use this specification to specify how your API looks like to have like one single source of truth. Because this specification is language agnostic. So it's not like written in TypeScript or in Java or in C Sharp. It's just like its own specification, which then can be used to implement the front end, but also the back end parts, also like in different languages. But OpenAPI is much more than just a specification because the people behind OpenAPI created also generators. So this makes it really powerful in my opinion and I also use these generators heavily. So let me show you what kind of generators there exist. So you can have your specification which is a YAML or a JSON and then can pass the specification to these generators and create your client but also your server implementations. And there are many client and server generators. You can go to OpenAPI generator tech. I will link it also in the description. And here you can see you have many client generators, for example. You can see you have many for C++, for any language you can imagine, for Java, but also for Ruby, Rust, and of course also for TypeScript and JavaScript. But as you can see here, there are generators for many different TypeScript implementations. So for Angular, Axios, Fetch, and so on. So you have many choices to use here. Now, of course, for servers, there are also many for Java, there are for Kotlin, C Sharp, anything you could imagine, even some for Spring. And in my professional life as a developer, I use the TypeScript Angular generator in the front end and the Spring generator in the back end to generate the client and server parts. But when I checked here if there is a TypeScript client generator, which also supports stuff like, for example, SOT for validating the requests and responses, then I saw that this was not available. That's why I started to look around a little bit and I found this really cool repository called OpenAPI SOT Client. This is also a generator and you maybe already figured it out, this will create a client implementation of your OpenAPI specification, which is backed by Zot and Sodios. So for the ones of you who don't know what Sodios is, Sodios basically is an end-to-end type-safe REST API. This looks really promising, of course, but this only works nicely when you have control over your API, and it would be nice if you also write your backend in TypeScript or JavaScript. But this often is not the case, and this is also the strength from OpenAPI. As already mentioned, it's language agnostic. But this OpenAPI SOT client here uses Sodius under the hood to generate this client, but it uses the OpenAPI specification as its input to create this client. So when we check why this exists, we can see that sometimes we don't have control over our API and we need to consume an API from another team and maybe this team uses another language or framework. So this is also why it's important that we have something which is language agnostic. And this is exactly why I like the CLI so much because it enables us to have this SOT validation by using the OpenAPI specification. So let me now show you how we can use this OpenAPI SOT client to generate our client. So let's now switch into our example application and let's generate some code. So we can see here, this is quite a small application here. It has only a pet store YAML in here, package JSON and this index.ts file. Now let's first check this pet store YAML here. Pet store is basically like the go-to example OpenAPI uses to show all the possibilities this specification offers. Of course, many things here are not really interesting, especially when you already are used to the OpenAPI specification, but we, for example, have paths here, which our API will cover. So for example, when we call slash pet, we want to allow the put HTTP verb to be used. And then we have something called an operation ID. This is basically the function we will then call from our client. And here it gets interesting because we have our request body and we can see here, we can specify that the content is for example, application JSON here. Now we can see here that we have 
you find a schema and can say this is this pet reference here. So let's check what this pet reference means. And we can see here we have created like an object schema, which we call pet here. And this has two required properties, name and photo URLs, and all the other ones are not required. So because of that, what we now can do is we can say, well, when we call this put here, update pet, then we have to pass this valid schema here and we get a response of 200, which is also a pet here. So because of that, SOT will now be able to create this validation of this pet. So when we send some data, we will see that it will not work if we send some wrong data. And when we receive some data, we can also be sure that it is in a certain shape. Now let's go into our package JSON and see what we need as dependencies. We only need the open API SOT client here in the most recent version. And the next thing we now need to do is we need to have a script which generates our client by using this pet story YAML. So for this, we say we have a pre-build because we want to regenerate our generated code each time we build our application. So what we now can do is we just call open API SOT client like this. But of course, we need to add some properties to it, some configuration properties so that it generates the client exactly as we like. So the first thing is we pass the input. This is the pet story YAML, which it will use. Now, the next thing, which is also interesting is how we want to group our files. So we want to have one file per API. So for example, we have our pet API, we have our store API, and we have other APIs. So what we will do is we will say group strategy, and we then say tag file. Because when we check the pet store YAML, we can see here that we have these tags, for example, pet, store, and so on. And we have this paths also, which we assign some tags to it. So we want, for example, that this update pet is in the file pet.ts. Now, because of that, we say here we have our group strategy, which is tag file like this. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to say, where do we want to generate our output? So we have our output here and we say we want it under the generated folder. The next thing is we also want to say export schemas true and we want to say export types true so that we have these types which get created, for example, from the pet, they should be exported. And the next thing is we can specify here a base URL. So I am running currently like a mock server, a fake backend, which is available on the localhost 3000. So what we will do is we say base URL equals HTTP localhost 3000 like this. Of course, you could also pass this in your code and overwrite this, for example, for different stages, but I will keep it like this to make it a little bit easier. And the last thing we will do is we will say strict objects. Because of that, we will add this SOT validation that it's not allowed that an object has additional properties, but only the ones which we have specified. Now we have already everything we need for our command. So what we now will do is we will run npm run prebuild. So let's run this. And we can see we have now a generated folder. When we check this here, we can see we have this folder generated and we have an index pet store and user in it. These are generated from our tags. So let's check first the index.ts file. We see we have everything exported here, pet API, store API and user API. So let's check this pet.ts file. So when we check what's in there, we can see it all starts with the types. These are basic TypeScript types and these got created by using this open API specification. Now, this would also be generated when we would use, for example, the normal open API generators which we saw on their website. But what's different by using this open API SOT client is that we also have these SOT types here. So we can see here we have the one for category, tag, and also for pet. And we can see here that the name here is not optional because in our pet store YAML, when we check again this pet here, we can see that we have set the name and photo URLs to required. So because of that, this generator now created the name here, which is not optional, and the photo URLs, which is also not optional but everything else is optional in here. Now, when we scroll down here, we can also see it has created these endpoints by using this make API function. And this make API function comes from Sodius. So when we check here the imports, we can see that make API, Sodius and so on are imported from Sodius core. So we can see here that this is like a normal Sodius API, like we would create them ourselves. We have this alias here, we can see update pet, for example. And that's also what I really like about this library because it creates readable code. This is code you basically would write exactly the same yourself, but you don't have to, and you can just generate it by using the YAML. So you can make much less errors than when you write all the code yourself. 
So really cool stuff in my opinion. So, but let's now go into our index file and let's call some APIs, shall we? So we go into our index.ts file here and we can see this is an empty file. But what I've done is I created an iffy function. So a function which gets immediately executed so that we can just use top level await in here. So what would we do if we would do this manually? We would use, for example, fetch, and then we would check our pet store YAML to see what the URL looks like. But of course we don't have to use this. We can just say, pet API like this and then we can just use for example get pet by ID and now we can see that we get an error because when we check what the get pet by ID here means we can see get pet by ID that we have to pass a parameter ID here and this is required so because of that we will get an error when we try to call it like this so we can just say params here and we then have the auto completion for ID and we can just pass an ID of one, for example. Now, when we say here, result like this, await, and we just call it, then we can see that we get this resolve promise with the ID one, with the name of Mr. Fluff. Now, this of course would also work when we would create our code with a different generator. Maybe the API here would look a little bit differently, but basically it would be the same. Now, what's the advantage of using Zodius? Well, if you would have something like this as any, so when you would pass in a one here, but would cast it as any, TypeScript would have no possibility to show us, hey, this is wrong because TypeScript is only compile time safe, but at runtime, TypeScript will not run any checks. But this is exactly where Stott will come into play. So when I run this code, we can see that I get a rejected promise. And don't get this wrong. This is not something the server sends back to us, but this is generated by the Sodius client, which was generated. Because we can see here when we see the issue, Use code invalid type expected string received number. And this is what's better when we use this Sodios implementation and this OpenAPI dot client than when we would use a normal TypeScript generator from the OpenAPI generator website. Because this way we have also the runtime safety. Now, of course, I can just change this back and now I will send again correct data. But with this, we can be sure that we cannot send wrong data to the backend and we can also not receive wrong data from the backend as a response. Now, when we run this again, of course, this will work again. Now, what we also can do, of course, is we say edit here and we say await pet API add pet like this and we would then have to pass a body and we can see we need to pass a name here so we have for example mrs cat here and we have also the photo url we have to specify because otherwise we would get an error now we can also run this of course and as we can see we get this resolve promise with this new id and now we could start to work with this new created pet now i think this really shows the strength of these open api generators and the sod generator in particular because just think about all these code you would have to create yourself all the time and let's just think what would happen if you would go into the pet store yaml and then we would say mm, i think i don't want to call this here id but i want to call this uuid and use it like this here and then i I would forget to change this in this pet.ts file. Now this cannot happen when we use the generated one because when we just run npm pre-build, we can see that when we go into our index, we will now get an error because we can see that id is not known only UUID exists. And this is something which is really hard to do when we don't use generated code, but when we just update them ourselves manually. So of course, there are many, many more possibilities how you can use the OpenAPI specification. And let me know if you want to see a more deep dive how we can use the OpenAPI specification to create really, really powerful APIs. But I think this really shows like on a base level how you can use these OpenAPI generators and the OpenAPI SOT client in particular to generate all all this code and make it much less error prone than when we would create them manually. And I think if you don't want to use the SOT client or maybe you don't even want to use TypeScript but any other language, please try one of these generators because I think almost all languages are supported and it really helps that you have to write less code and also less boring code because when we use these generators we can really just focus on the stuff which really is important, for example the business logic or the domain logic. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date about the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of topic you want to get covered in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.